Okay, now today's lesson, if you could see here, is about building with waste plastic bottles in Honduras. It's going to be a different lesson today. And the objective of the lesson is to see if you can use mathematics to analyze a situation. If you look at this uh, picture, you could see how in some part of the world, they are making use of the plastic bottles that you normally throw them away. They are making very good use of it. For, uh, looking at this, what I want you to do in pairs for two minutes is to make a list of all the things that you notice on this power slide. Now we're going to collect our ideas together and then from there we decide which ones will be very good for us to get some mass. Okay, so now we're going to look through what is here. The first one, windows without a glass. Can we get any mathematics from that? No. no. Okay. Why? That's got nothing to do with numbers. It's got nothing to do with numbers. It's got nothing to do with numbers. And if a bottle crack, the house will collapse. Can we no. use a mathematics for that? No. Okay. Yeah, you can. You can. How much will it really to crack? Yeah. How much will it take to crack a bottle? Excellent. So it's like now. People are, saying, people are saying that we can, so, which means that they can do it. So that's science. Ah. Mathematics. Oh, I suppose it's science and math. Yeah, mathematics is everything that is around us. So if it can happen in science, then it can happen in mathematics. So if you can do it in science, it means you can also do it here. So I want everyone here, every group, to choose one question that they're going to answer. So can you now start, please? We found the measurement of one bottle and we are 34 centimeters. 34 centimeters and then we are we find the measurement of the width and um, and the length of the room which is seven times eight meters and we're trying to find how many bottles we need in one room. Now each group is going to tell us what they've done and then why are they doing that? Ali. Our problem was how to do the corners work yeah. and um, as we saw in the pictures, they yeah. used towers. Yeah. And we've looked at two ways we can build a tower. One, stacking the bottles up. Yeah. All it takes is a strong wind to blow it up. Yeah. At. So the wall, wall um, the corner could collapse. Yeah. Probably mm -hmm. taking the wall with it. But if you use like towers, which would probably take more bottles, but you have to fill in the gaps with like plaster or cement. So yeah. if you have a stronger wind, it won't really knock over. Okay. Our problem was we, we needed to know how many bottles it would take to make one wall. Mm -hmm. So we measured um, top to bottom yeah. uh, to, uh, and we times it to get the area of mm -hmm. the wall. Then we got the bottle and we got one side of the bottle, which is the thing, the base, and we got the area of that. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to measure how m and then we divided it by the thing so to get how many the answer to how many bottles it take to fill up a bottle. Okay. But we, uh, think the answer we, we couldn't get it because the thing, the measure strip was ten. It said ten feet, but the thing was meters. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. How, I think we have to confirm first. The question that I want to ask is always the things that happen around us. Do you always think of it as mathematics as we've done today? Okay, so from now on, this is what you have to be start, uh, start thinking. Everything that happens around us has got mathematics in it. Do you want us to continue doing mathematics in this form or not? Is it interesting? How does this compare with a normal maths lesson? In a normal lesson, if we found it hard, we'd immediately put our hands up because we're just like, we can't be bothered working it out. And if it was in a normal lesson, we'd just go, mate, you don't know how to do this, please tell us how to do it. But in this, because we're working as a group, we can rely on each other to ask. We can't just ask the teacher. We're addicted to it. And it's good fun. And what has the teacher taught them? Oh, well, she's taught us 
Well, we've freely taught ourselves. It's been like just using what she's actually taught us and then inventing new ways of teaching ourselves, really. So, she's helped us, like, giving us the basis, and then we've really just taught ourselves how to do it, and then she's just told if it's right or wrong. Like all the problem solving bits and the calculations, how to use a calculator and all that. But it's a really good life skill as well. Do they mind being left alone more by the teachers? Well, it's good because they're not, like, coming my and making sure you're doing it all right, but you're like, if you suck, they'll come and help you, so get help. But we ask for help when we need it, but because we don't need it, she doesn't like bother us so we can get on with our task. So, what's it like for the teacher using this case study for the first time with her pupils? It's, it's quite scary at first, I mean, just letting them get on with it and have the free range of what they're doing. It's quite scary, but seeing their reactions to it today, they've all got really, really had a good go and got stuck in with it. So it's been a pleasure to watch them do it and interacting with them in, a, in it. Kind of had a better relationship with them as the days progressed because they're not relying on me the same. So when I speak to them, it's in a completely different tone to it. Right, so you've sort of thought on your feet, put it, put in because it's local. I still feel to some degree I'm I'm gathering their results and sort of collating what they're saying and trying to make sure that everybody in the team understands what's going on and someone's not getting left behind. But not the same experience of teaching as being up at the board all the time and constantly supervising what they're doing. But can the pupils see where the maths is? Well, I think that that's the best thing about it. Where is the maths? They don't even appreciate that they're doing the maths the same as if I give them a question on ratio or proportion, they'd be scared a mile. But because it's something that relates to real life and it's something they're enjoying doing, they just seem to be getting on and applying more the, all the knowledge that they know but I definitely want to do it again because the results of it they've got on so well and done it that I'd be I'd definitely be keen to try the next task with them in a different one. I think it's a completely different experience teaching in this way and I think um, you can get an, a lot out of it uh, because the kids actually put more into the lesson usually you feel sometimes it's the other way around but you feel that they're putting a lot of input themselves and you're not having to do quite as much it's a bit frantic sort of getting around to everybody but it's a it's different than sort of demanding their attention all the time and, and teaching that way. In a lot of ways, a, a, a refreshing change. Really.